A Bezier curve is a parametric curve defined by a set of n plus 1 control points in a vector space. The curve is expressed- Whoa, 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 that's a lot of math. This is not that video. So, what is this video? Well, sometimes these videos over-index on the technical specifications, and they overlook the history, practicality, and design. And that's what I want to talk about. Okay, a little bit silly. But this made me ask some questions. Why are PowerPoint curves so complex? What the heck are these lines? And really, what is a curve? All right, so let's start by drawing a few common shapes. For most of us, this is pretty easy. But now imagine that you're a computer. Excellent work, Mark. Computers don't intrinsically understand shapes in the way that you and I do. They have to be programmed through code. In other words, to draw a rectangle, a computer has to be told what a rectangle is. Let's illustrate how a computer would think through each of our shapes. A rectangle can be thought of as a width and a height with four straight sides and all right angles. A triangle, or any polygon, can be thought of as points in space connected by straight lines, similar to the rectangle. A circle is a shape with all points that are the same distance from its center. It can be represented by this equation. We can even teach computers to draw more complex shapes, such as the heart-shaped cardioid, which is defined by that. The bottom line is drawing each of these shapes can be broken down to a set of rules or equations. So how does a computer think about these shapes? These shapes are complex. They have straight lines and points similar to the rectangle and the triangle, but they also have these curves. And these curves aren't logical in that they don't follow an equation in the same way that the curves of a cardioid and a circle do. So how do we teach a computer about curves? Well, one way to think of a curve is a bit like the polygon. We could treat the curve like a series of straight lines, and if we add enough points to the curve, it looks smooth. But this means computers have to store and remember a lot of points, and a solution like this just doesn't scale. Now, obviously computers have figured out curves by now. After all, we are all viewing curves on a computer. But there was a point in time that curves were not a given. And it's important to understand how we got here. Let's take it back a few years. To 
get a sense of what the 60s looked like in our context, here's a few basics. One, computers are hot. This is a time of rapid digital industrialization. Two, the car industry is changing. Those new computers are being used to design and manufacture cars instead of hand-drawn blueprints. And last, but not least, Pierre Bézier is a car engineer. See, in the 60s, Pierre was solving the curves problem for the car industry, or uh, popularizing the solution. See, what Pierre figured out was that some math from the 1910s was a perfect way to teach a computer what a curve is. And we still use this today. Bezier curves are used in places ranging from CAD software to fonts. Yeah, some 1960s French guy gave you Times New Roman. Okay, it probably is about time we talked about what a Bezier curve actually is and why they are so significant. So here's an explanation in 57 seconds. Let's start with the simplest of curves, a line. A line in computer speak is two points, commonly called anchor points, and then all of the points between those two points, the line. We can add an extra middle point to it, which we'll call T, which I like to think of as the distance traveled along the line. If we add another point, we can repeat this process and create a new type of line, a line between two middle points, two T's. If we add a middle point to that line, something cool happens. That point follows a curve. And observe, moving this point changes the curve. This is what is referred to as a control point. And what we just made is a quadratic Bezier curve. If we go one step further and add another control point, we get the more common cubic Bezier curve. I will readily admit that I simplified things, but I like simple. And that's why I like Bezier curves. We tend to think of software as technology, the nuts and bolts of it. But such a generalized and scalable solution as Bezier curves is really a unique example of great design. So let's take things to the top and try this again. 